In the opening scene, we are introduced to a family of two, the mother Grace and her six-year-old daughter, Lisa. They live a happy, happy life in the outskirts of Seoul. Being a single mother, Grace does everything she can for her little girl. At first glance, they look like a normal, happy family. But we soon discover that as time passes, Lisa is growing younger. Grace knows this and is worried about her daughter disappearing someday. This is why she tries spending as much time with her as she can. But eventually, six years pass, and like she had predicted, Lisa grows shorter every year and eventually goes back into her mother's belly. I call this the curious case of Benjamin Bellybutton. She softly holds her, knowing she only has nine months left, and they won't meet again because her life is moving backwards. However, time didn't always move backwards for Grace. It all started in August of 2019. Grace is living happily with her daughter, and time moves forward for them just like it does for anyone else. But everything changes one day, when Lisa is murdered at the hands of a mentally ill man. Grace's entire world crashes as she tries her best to keep herself together. Moreover, the murderer got away with the act because of his mental condition. Grace has been protesting his imprisonment, but it only causes her more trouble. The only reporter on her side tells her to stop because the murderer is somewhere in the hospital where all his needs are being taken care of. In addition, her boss warns her to stop the protest because it gives their company a bad reputation. When Grace loses all will to live, she finds a group of depressed people trying to commit the unthinkable. They decide to meet on August 16th and travel to the countryside where they will take sleeping pills and commit the unthinkable together. Before going to meet them, Grace places her diary on her daughter's grave with all their pictures and notes on it. Since Grace has only talked to the group on the phone, she is a bit late to the location. Upon finally reaching the place, she meets Park. Like everyone else in the group, he is also tired of his life. On their way to the countryside, everyone silently listens to the radio, announcing a meteor shower happening in a few hours. While the rest of the world is excited to witness something magical, this group doesn't care. They finally reach a small cottage just when the meteor show starts. The pills are distributed and eaten before everyone goes to sleep. One girl in particular, named Su Na, has trouble swallowing the pills, so Grace asks her to crush them. At midnight, Su Na wakes up and starts vomiting. This is followed by the rest of the group waking up in a similar fashion. In the following scene, we see Park and Suna on hospital beds next to each other. The doctors are trying their best to save Park, but eventually, they announce his death. Grace can hear them talking, but is in too much pain to react to the situation. Upon glancing at Park's dead body, she sees him wake up. He tells her to wait until he remembers her. Grace doesn't know what that means, but the words leave a print on her mind. The scene changes to the next day. Grace wakes up, and to her utter surprise, the date is still August 16th. She is supposed to meet the rest of the group in a few hours, even though she remembers all of them dying last night. Grace dismisses this as a dream and does everything she did yesterday. Because she knows where they are supposed to meet, she isn't late today like she was last time. The day goes as planned, and at night, Grace crushes the pills for Suna without her asking. This further makes her believe that she wasn't dreaming, but Grace is now ready to end her sufferings and doesn't have time to dwell on what happened last night. They take the pills and fall asleep. The next morning comes, and the date goes back to August 15th. Grace puts two and two together to figure out that her life is moving backward. Since August 17th, she immediately goes to her psychic sister, Anna, and tells her what happened. Anna doesn't believe her and asks her to go to the doctor. This is when it hits Grace that even if her life continues going backward, no one will believe her because she would not be able to meet them in the future. For the next few days, every time Grace wakes up, she goes back a day into the past. On some occasions, she decides to stay awake the entire night, but as soon as the clock hits 12, she is miraculously transported to her bed. As the day moves forward, she remembers everything that is about to happen that day and can even forecast the weather, the most useless superpower of them all. However, Grace doesn't mind living this way because this will mean she will get to meet her daughter and prevent her death very soon. As days pass, Grace grows angrier at the person who killed her daughter. Before the little girl returns to life, Grace wants to kill the murderer. Murderer. One night, she goes to the hospital where he is admitted and tries to suffocate him to death. She only stops when Park comes into the hospital room, revealing that the murderer is his mentally ill father. He doesn't remember Grace because he's not living in the past like she is, but he seems to recognize her face to some extent. Grace is so shocked that she runs away without saying a word. 
A few more days later comes the day of Lisa's funeral. Grace is not half as sad as she was the last time, knowing that she will soon get a chance to save her daughter. She even refuses to put up a picture of Lisa on the grave. It is then revealed that when Lisa died, she was on a school trip with her teacher and friends. Hence, when Grace wakes up the following morning, the first thing she does is call Lisa's school teacher, asking her to keep an eye on the little girl for the next few hours. After that, she rushes to Seoul, to the resort where the students are staying. On her way, Grace also makes sure to call the police and tell them about an insane man trying to kill her daughter. Somewhere else, we see Park taking care of his mentally ill father, David. Park has been living with his father for the past few years and is tired of the old man ruining everything going on in his life. This morning, when David refuses to get into the house, Park rudely throws him out, hoping they will never meet again. At the same time, Lisa's teacher falls asleep and the girl wanders out to the swimming pool area where she meets David. They go go to a small farm by the resort and get some eggs. David says he is bringing them for his son and is happy to have found the little girl as a friend. But while trying to cross the pool, the eggs fall into the water. David goes in to retrieve them, but behind him, Lisa falls into the deep end and starts drowning. David is trying his best to save her. When the police officer and Grace arrive at the same time, Grace finds her daughter alive and is washed with relief. She wants David to be arrested before Lisa tells her that David is her friend who saved her. Grace finally realizes that she had been protesting for the wrong thing because David was never at fault for the death. A while later, Park comes to pick up his father, regretful for treating him the way he did in the morning. Grace recognizes him yet again and tries to chat with him, but he treats her like a stranger before walking away with his father. The next morning, Grace wakes up and breaks into tears upon seeing her daughter sleeping by her side. Later, Lisa asks her mother to stop crying by writing it down in their shared diary, the one Grace left on the grave earlier. It is then revealed that the diary has traveled backward through time and has everything Grace wrote in the future in it. Days become months as Grace lives her best life with her daughter. Even though they age backward and she is worried about Lisa disappearing after a few years, she is happy to have spent more time with her. Years pass and soon, Grace returns to 2011 when she is nine months pregnant with Lisa. After giving birth, she holds Lisa for a few extra minutes, knowing that it is the last time she will meet her in person. Just as she had thought, the next day she is back to being pregnant, which is difficult because she will eventually lose the baby altogether and go back to her younger self. With time, Grace makes peace with the fact that she will never see her daughter again. Then, one afternoon, she finds a letter on the back of the diary. To her surprise, it is a message from Park, where he apologizes to her for her daughter's death and blames himself because he left his father alone that day. It turns out that he wrote this letter a day before he decided to commit the unthinkable. He visited the grave on the same day and put the letter inside the diary Grace left. When Park and Grace met on the 17th of August, he was shocked because he knew she was the mother of the girl who died. Grace remembers Park's last words to her. He asked her to wait until he remembers her. She realizes that she needs to find him and make him remember the future where they died together. This might also be the answer to turning back time into its original form. After doing some research, Grace finds the address of Dwight, the last member of the group who wanted to commit the unthinkable. She meets him and discovers that he has also been living life backwards since the day they died. Unlike Grace, Dwight is having fun living life this way because he is destined to grow younger and die. The traumatic part of his life is over, and now he just wants to live until the inevitable comes. They remember Suna and dwell about what she might be doing in her life. Upon looking for her for a while, they find her about to sign a deal with a company that is bound to ruin her life. They stop her from signing the contract, which further saves her life in the future. A few months later, Grace is with her sister when she happens to bump into Park. He works as a delivery man for a furniture company. He obviously doesn't recognize her, but Grace makes sure to ask for his card to contact him later. The next day, she goes to his work and saves him from rude customers trying to get him fired. Moreover, it turns out to be his first day at work. After standing up for him, she follows him home and is later confronted. Park assumes she is a stalker before she tells him that she knows him from the future. That's on honestly a really good line for a stalker. He doesn't believe her, but she has decided to make him remember her at all costs. In the next scene, we see Grace going to Park's work again. This time, she finds him interviewing for the job. The interviewer doesn't take Park seriously because of his shoulder injury. After the interview, Grace introduces herself to Park again. She pretends to be someone random and asks him out for drinks. Once Park is drunk, Grace shows him his card, asking him not to worry because he is bound to be selected. By the end of the date, Grace finds out that Park 
Stark used to be a skilled Taekwondo fighter. A few weeks ago, he had a very important match where he suffered a shoulder injury. It ended his career and triggered his father's mental illness. Grace watches the videos of the said fight, determined to stop the worst from happening. The day of the fight comes and she tries her best to stop Park from going through with it. She even tells him about his father's health and his shoulder. And even though Park believes her to some extent, he is not willing to give up at this point of his life. He enters the ring and gets his shoulder broken just like he did the first time. His father David suffers a stroke as Grace watches her plan fail in misery. In the following scene, Grace meets Dwight. Upon finding out that her only wish is to see her daughter, he reveals that a meteor shower is about to take place in a few months. According to Dwight, the time is moving backward for them because they tried to commit the unthinkable during the last meteor shower. Hence, if Grace is willing to risk her life again, this might be her chance to change her fate and turn the time into its original form. Grace immediately decides to go through with the plan for the slightest chance to see her daughter again. A few weeks weeks pass. Then comes the day of the meteor shower. Grace goes to meet Park for the last time, to wish him farewell. But instead, she meets David. He is in a good condition, which is a strange sight for Grace. She apologizes to him for misjudging him, and runs to look for Park at his practice. To her misfortune, Park turns out to be partying with his friends the same day. She looks for him for hours before giving up and getting on a bus to the Han River. But by a strange twist of fate, Park ends up on the same bus as her. Glad to see him there, Grace gives him the diary and hugs him for the last time. After she leaves, Park opens it and finds the journals about Grace's experience. By the time he reads all of it, he remembers every encounter he has had with Grace until now. Upon finding out about her plan to commit the unthinkable, he runs to the Han River. The scene cuts abruptly when Grace jumps into the water. She wakes up the next day, but it turns out that the plan worked and now, time has started moving forward for her again. Park also continues living, but he regularly reads the diary Grace gave him. Currently, he is getting ready for the same match that could make or break his career. But this time, he has Park's diary in his hands, guiding him. His fate changes because of the diary, making him win the game. His father doesn't get a stroke, and the two are happier than ever. A year passes, and Grace goes into labor again. She gives birth and finally gets to meet her daughter. With the knowledge she has of the future, she can protect the little girl. In the last scene, Park meets Grace and hands her the diary back. In the end, both of them live a good life, one with a better career and the other with her daughter. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.